Let's talk about the poverty mindset. Where does that come from and how do we get away from that? Um, it started with uh, societal standards uh, of, of, of redlining us, separating us. But in truth, if we really look at it at its core, we actually thr thrived more when we were segregated. Um, so it, it, it has a lot to do with uh, lack of accountability. And if I'm us always trying to put what we can't do on a white man, on a red man, on a Mexican man, on this religion, on this God. Well, if I grew up Baptist and I didn't grow up this, maybe I would have. But a lot has to do with accountability. You're the one who made the mistake. You the one who slept with that chick. You the one who slept with that dude. You the one who got that car you could not afford. You the one who went and purchased them clothes. So when we start being more accountable to ourselves, we're gonna realize that you can account for what you are accountable to. And if I'm not accountable to anything, I can't account for my money. I can't account for you know finances to make sure that I can be able to thrive the way that I should. And so a lot of us just lack accountability. We see it all on social media. Everybody blaming everybody, but your situation's still trash. You getting out of you getting out of duck car, but you got all design on. That don't make sense. <laughs> yeah. sure. and so so it just it just comes to that accountability. Uh, um, seeing where I really am and not faking the funk. I'm really broke. I really got children. <laughs> My business, sorry. I need to get a job. Right. Like these are, these are real things that we can address and I think they'll start helping us out a little bit. Thanks. When it comes to poverty, I always think about the uh, poverty mindset. Um, I think of two things. I think about the growth mindset and the fixed mindset. Growth mindset is you're always looking for the way to grow and develop yourself and improve yourself to continue to progress, right? And then the fixed mindset is a poverty mindset. You think this way, your mind never changed. You always want this. You're stubborn. You never really uh, give yourself room and, and grace to grow. And then the next flip side of it, I think about the, the parable of the talents. And so a lot of people don't know this when it comes to talent. Um, it was really worth, one talent was 16 years of a uh, of working wage. If you think about that, that's a lot of money. That's yeah. one talent. So you had the one that had one, you had the other one that had two, you had the other one that had five. So if you know anything about the, the parable, the one that had five, when it flipped it, he took the, the investment and made more, he had 10. The one that had two ended up you know, having more, right? The one who had one, he didn't do anything with it. He buried it in the ground. That's the poverty mindset. Okay. You're thinking that what you have is yours when all of it, all the talents was never was none of theirs to begin with. It was always God's to begin with. So when you understand how, how of how you have to be a wise steward with resources, with opportunities, not just tangible money, but any opportunity, you have to make the most with it so that way you can beget more, so that way you can always be a well that overflows. Your cup run overrun it. And I think a poverty mindset is the individual who took that one and didn't do anything with it. And when you think about it, he was stealing. Because he thought it was his to bury, but it was always his to go and invest and make more with it. So that's how I consider poverty as a person who doesn't make more with what they've been given, and a person who's always stuck and fixated in that mentality and won't never change. That's well said. Um, I love that because to me also, the poverty, poverty mindset also comes from a lot of fear. Um, I remember when I first moved to Dallas um, with my husband, we were living out of a semi-truck. Um, a lot of people don't realize that for a long time. And so once we finally were making money within our business, there was a point where I was so afraid to spend anything. So I'm like, I'm not going back. It's like PTSD, like you're, I'm not going back to that. And so we have to let go of that fear that we have and understand that money is just a resource and really having that shift in mindset and letting go of the fear and healing ourselves from our past traumas that are attached to money, that's gonna make the world a difference. <laughs> wow, okay, so before I even get any further, I am a preacher's kid, so this is, PK, so I'm, yeah, I'm a PK, so. <laughs> no, y'all get, right, so get sermons I, today. I, right, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try not to have a sermon, so. I'm going to look at it from the standpoint of I was born and raised on the south side of Chicago. And I my thoughts on poverty mindset are more based in what I experienced and saw in our communities. 
And when I look at poverty mindset versus a wealth mindset, I equate it to a sprint versus a marathon. You train for both of them differently. A sprint, because a lot of us, and you can think about this growing up, we exist and do what we do for today and tomorrow, this weekend, this next trip, to go to the club. Like my man said, when you, know, when you bought, when you bought the, the, the Rolls Royce, most of us do this. We, like when my man say, you, you um, bought a $60,000 car to flex, living outside, your, you know, living with your mom outside her $20,000 duplex. We do this, and it's not for us. <laughs> we do this, it's not for us. You know, I've seen plenty of times people working jobs, and I'm working right, right with them. They're not thinking about stacking money. They're thinking about what they're going to go buy to go to the club this weekend to go wear and impress to show the same people you see every weekend. The car. And we, as brothers, we do this a lot. I got that Lexus. I got that Benz. Does it drive better than the Toyota? No, but it looks better when you pull up to that same club at the same weekend. Sounds better, too. Right. It, <laughs> uh, it depends. You know what I'm saying? It, it, you know, I don't know about that part. It, it just looks better. <laughs> right. But, the, but the thing about it is we do that because we don't think about tomorrow. As long as we have our rent paid this month, we're good. As long as we have our light bill paid this month, we're good. When you start talking in, in a previous life, as I like to say, I worked on Wall Street. I was a broker. I, was, I did wealth management for Morgan Stanley. And the funniest thing is, when you start trying to do long-term planning, the biggest obstacle is people can't see next year. So when you start talking about putting together portfolios and putting things, that poverty mindset is, no, I need to make sure I got money now for this vacation, for this trip, for this weekend, for this month, for this Christmas season. How many times, this is running jokes in our communities, how many times tax season come around and what's the running joke? You get, you get the money in February, March, and you, it's gone by when? <laughs> and, 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 exactly. Before you even get it. Exactly, same thing. You, you save up all year to blow it all at Christmas for things that are gonna be broken by March. April. Not for sure. But when you ask people to go ahead and invest, and I'm sure these brothers can tell you, when you start talking about investments, it, the, the mindset switches. And then it goes back to our community that also a lot of us that come from communities that did not have, we exist just like the sister said. Like, I don't want to go back to that. So I want to make sure that I have these shoes. I want to make sure that I have this to make sure that I, and it's not planted. Those seeds are not planted for future growth. They're sitting there. And so the poverty mindset I really look at is, we surround ourselves even when we leave our communities. Okay, we got that good job. We're making six figures. We move out to the suburbs. Guess what? We still existing month to month. We still are. And when you look at how detrimental this is, it's so detrimental. Entire industries have been built to be predatory to us. Commercials, hey, you know what? No money down during tax season. Go ahead and buy this, you know, this new bedroom set that you don't need. <laughs> Yeah. Buy here, pay here, car lots, tax season, go ahead and do this. Christmas season, go ahead. The entire industry of you don't have the money, go get it now. Corner. I mean, look at all these buy here, pay here companies and apps that have come up to basically be predatory on us because of our poverty mindset. And so my, my viewpoint on poverty mindset is it, it, it's like a weed. We have to start in our communities because guess what? Our kids are learning this right now. You don't even realize it. I realize it. You know, <laughs> Kill, killing my pocket. <laughs> when, when they see their birthdays coming up, so they got an abundance of gifts. But guess what? They also saw the lights got cut off two weeks later. So what happens when they grow older and they get that job? We're, we're chasing that cotton because that's what we equate to. I, I'm not going to be in poverty, not realizing that the irony of it is you're forcing yourself into a poverty mindset because you don't know what it's like to embrace wealth. And when you look at wealth, and that's gonna be a different question, but <laughs> there's a difference between being rich and being wealthy. Hold on to that one, we gonna dive deep into that one. So that's, but, that, that's my aspect on, on poverty mindset. It's actually generational and we pass it on without even realizing it because we do it ourselves. 